What's going on, you guys? Full steer, and I'm back with another video. Today's video will be an in depth Graves jungle guide. Graves actually is pretty strong right now, and since the new season just kicked off, I could actually recommend you to play Graves. Like, that might sound a little weird because Graves has been weak for a very long time now, but with the new runes, and since I've tested like multiple different builds, and also the uh, AD carry meta currently got me some inspiration. So, yeah, I mean, I'll just go into the build and. You guys should try it out if you play Graves. If you like Graves, definitely try this build out because it's actually pretty damn strong. Now let's get into it. I start with Fleet Footwork on Graves. This got buffed, I mean, not too long ago now. I think like a couple weeks ago. But overall, this is really the thing Graves needs. You need to get that extra move. You need to be able to stick with people. And this actually does that pretty damn nicely. You can get 30% move speed boost for one second multiple times in a fight because you can keep stacking it back up since it just stacks up by um, attacking and moving. So that's that's really like the main thing of this. Also going into the precision tree will mean you get the 18% attack speed if you go into another tree after this. Which is a really big deal for Graves in the early game because um, if you don't have uh, like any attack speed. Like previously on runes you go a lot of attack speed to make up for the fact that you have bullets that need to reload and with attack speed that goes faster. So that's another plus of this tree as well. Then after this, I really like Overheal on Graves with the build I'm going for. I'm going for quite a heavy lifesteal build. And Overheal will provide me with a lot of extra health. Now some of you might be, why don't you go for Triumph? I personally don't find myself in low, like in situations where missing health actually matters a lot. Like sometimes, yes. But in most cases, I am so insanely tanky with lifesteal and just straight damage that I have that I don't really get low. And then 12% of my missing health is going to be like nothing. Like that's actually not going to deal like do much. Whilst overheal will just give me the shield, the extra shield that will pretty much be more health in total than the, t the triumph will be. So that's the reason I'm going for overheal. And this is also the AD carry overheal meta. Now after this, you go for bloodline. Again, some of you guys might be like, why don't you go for the attack speed? The reason I go for Bloodline on Graves is because it will provide me with a base lifesteal of like 8%, I believe it is. Yeah, it's 8%, which means that you don't really have to buy any lifesteal items instantly or as fast, if you know what I mean. So you don't have to go like Vamp Scepter, because you pretty much have a built-in Vamp Scepter, which is very valuable. Because that will work really well in combination with your Overheal, plus then also the lifesteal you have on your jungle item. So it's overall a very good uh, combination, and you already like you already get the 18% of attack speed out of the picking the second tree with this tree. So you don't really need this all this extra attack speed, you will be getting an attack speed item anyway, so that's really why you go for Bloodline. Uh, this will allow you to go for like a, a first item cleave or anything like that. Something that doesn't... Or like first item Phantom Dancer and you don't have to go like instant lifesteal after that. You can go like Phantom Dancer cleaver and then have like lifesteal to combine with it really well. So that's why I go for Bloodline. And then after this I go for Coupe de Grasse because... Well, I tried Lost Stand for a while. But I pretty much found the same reason I found uh, Overheal better than Triumph. I don't really get low all that much. I usually am pretty damn healthy. So... It just means that if I, I if I don't get low, Lost Time won't be too effective. So if I get the enemy low, Coupe de Grasse is still effective. So that's really why you go for this. Also, if you get a takedown, you get that nice extra boost in attack damage for a little bit. So you can uh, like keep going with it, I guess. So that's the, probably the best one to go for. Now, for the secondary one, there are a couple of options. Really, really only two options that are viable and like good. That just depends on kind of if you want to build a Frozen Melon or not. But that's, yeah... I'll, um, I'll, I'll get into the option I would prefer to go for in most situations. It is Sudden Impact in combination with the Ravenous Hunter. The Ravenous Hunter synergizes well with the setup you have right here in the uh, overheal section and all that. Because then you will heal off your Q and your ultimate and all that. You can get a little bit of extra healing that way. The other one you could go for is the Relentless Hunter. It will... Um, I mean, it, it's a viable choice. Honestly, it's kind of a toss-up between the two because, honestly, Revenant Hunter on Graves doesn't do all that much. And then Reven uh, the Relentless Hunter will be allowing you to roam the map a little faster so you can get to a play, maybe counter gank a little bit faster. So if that's really what you're looking for, that's also a viable choice. Like, easily a viable choice. So that's completely up to you. I like the extra healing from Revenant Hunter just a little bit more than I like the Relentless Hunter. So that's really why I'm going for this, but it's it's pretty close. So, and then Sudden Impact, of course, um, is mainly used in the early game to get yourself some extra damage in your Q. If you're, like, fighting someone on, like, level 4, maybe level 5, even level 6, like, those early kind of levels, 
Then the extra 10 lethality you get from just dashing, queuing someone into the wall and like auto attacking them once. That will that, that extra damage means quite a lot. So that really helps you in 1v1 situations early on. Now the other choice is if you do go for like a frozen melon in the type of build, you can go approach velocity on graves. This synergizes really well with fleet footwork as well. And then also synergizes with red buff, of course. Plus with the um, W right now, this also synergizes with that. So if you hit the W on somebody, then you can just approach Velocity closer to them, and then that way that will work as well. Now after this uh, in this tree, I per personally like, I guess, Futures Market the most. Perfect timing is an option as well. I don't like the magical footwear on any jungler, so please, if you go approach Velocity, if you decide to go this route, do not go for magical footwear, because that's just going to slow you down a lot. It will it cripple your roaming speed, it will just cripple your jungle clear as well, so it's definitely not worth doing that. So I'd say... Futures Market or Perfect Timing, kind of whatever you prefer, but usually I tend to go with a Futures Market because I just like to have that little bit of extra gold leeway more than I like the, the stopwatch, really. So that's pretty much the, the options. So you can go for this one or this one. The other ones really aren't that good, or maybe this one. So that's completely up to you. And yeah, let's get right into the item build now. So let's move on here. All right. So starting items is pretty straightforward. You get a Hunter's Machete with the refillable potion. Um, basic start on Grave. You auto attack a lot. So this is definitely the best one to go for. I mean, refillable. you don't need any health potions when clearing on the Graves. But I guess refillable potions is just a nice backup. And it's going to provide you with health potions throughout the entire game. The reason you don't need health potions at all, even if you get hit these days, is because of the rune page that I have with Bloodline and all that magical footwear lifesteal. You'll be completely fine, no problem. But that's the starting items. Then... Main item you want to get first is your Red Smite Warrior enchant. Where it is? Here it is. Actually, wait. I'll just go first back uh, first. Because first back for me is pretty much always the Red Smite in combination with boots. If I have 950 gold. And then if I have more than 1000 gold, I'll probably go for double longsword boots. And that's pretty much the options. Like, some of you guys might be like, if you have 950 gold, you can might as well wait for like 50 gold, right? But that's not how that works early game if you wait for 50 gold in the early game you're gonna get slowed down a good amount and that's most likely not worth it it's very close in price together but yeah if you just barely back with like 920 gold which honestly if you full clear once this will straight up give you the uh this item combination maybe with like some gank pressure on top lane or anything like that but this pretty much gives you this item combination so yeah if you have 700 gold, though, uh, it's probably best to buy double longsword because that's just going to give you the most damage in that in like in that area. Now, the first item you want to rush is the warrior enchant because it's pretty much the best one you can get and it's very cost efficient. The red smite warrior enchant will give you um, will give you a lot of extra damage, extra one v one potential. It's just pretty much the best one to go for. The, all the other ones here are really not that good on graves. Now, after this, you can upgrade your boots into a pair of Ninja Tabai or Mercs, depending on the enemy team. You have to do, do, do keep in mind that if you're facing more um, magic damage heavy teams and the like, they don't have too much CC, then it's still worth going Mercs on Graves because of the uh, MR you get from it. You don't get any MR from, your, from anything in your kit. You don't have any magic resist. So having that extra magic resist from that item will help you a lot. And then you can combine that with a Ma as well to stack up your magic resist even more. So in those cases, it's worth it because um, Graves passively gets armor from his E. So Ninja Tabis aren't that important to pick up in that case. It's better to then into heavy AP comps, pick up Mercs, even though it will not give you too much for the CC reduction. It's mainly for the magic resist straight up. So yeah, that's the boot options. Now, as a this is like a core build. Apart, like from here, it gets kind of variable on Graves. It really depends on the enemy team. The main item options are Black Cleaver, um, Phantom Dancer. Oh. And then you also have Bladed Rune King into higher health comps. You have the, um, I mean, Bloodthirster works as an item as well. This is not specifically in this order. I'll give you the orders I'll go for in just a second. I'm just going to give the items, get them together here. I mean, honestly, you can just press damage and you should be able to find most of your items. Because, um, I mean, some of you might be like, oh, Dust Blade's great on Graves, but I really don't like it that much. You have Death's Dance, you have Merc Sim is a good item. You can go for Ma, where there it is. And where's the Lost Whisper? And uh, Mortal Reminder, or I mean, more Dominics, I guess. You can go Mallet if you're going with the Approach Velocity route, could be a viable choice as well. And then one last item is Guardian Angel. 
These are pretty much all the items you can pick from on graves. I don't think I missed one, did I? Oh no, I missed one. My bad. Infinity Edge. It looked kind of like I. It looked like I was lacking one. These are all the items you can pick from on graves. Um, which item you want to get in which situation depends quite a lot on the enemy team. Usually, Bloodthirst or Infinity Edge are later items. Same goes for Merc Sim. So these are kind of later items. Now, if they have um, people that are buying Ninja Tabe quite early into your team, then Black Cleaver is a great first item to get because this will shred through that armor quite efficiently. Also, it's quite tanky and it gives you a good amount of CDR. So if they have like maybe Remus Jungle, like which is a pretty common jungler right now, those tanky type of junglers, Black Cleaver is a great item into those junglers. Sichuani, Remus, uh, even Warwick. Like Black Cleaver is really good into those because they tend to build for a uh, Ninja Tabai first and then go for like more of a tanky armor type of tanky build. So Black Cleaver first item is really good into those comps. If you're facing a more squishy team comp though, Let's say like uh, Kha'Zix jungle maybe with like, um, I don't know, just some squishy shit, you know. Then uh, Phantom Dance first item is a really, really good first item because of the fact that it will reduce the damage they can do to you. So most of the time squishy champions mean to do high amount of burst damage. Let's take Kha'Zix for example. So if you auto attack him, then he's going to deal 12% less damage to you, which means quite a lot in being able to 1v1 him effectively. Also, you get the chance to crit them. And if you crit like one of the squishy champions in the face, you're going to hit them like five, 600 and they're just going to lose half their health bar. So like a crit with QR, it's just instantly going to one shot anyone. So in those cases, Phantom Dancer is a really, really good first item. And another great first item is going to be the uh, uh, Blade of the Rune King. If you're facing higher health uh, champions. So let's say M Mundo top lane with like, who's a high health based jungler. Um, I mean, anything health based. Uh, Warwick, I guess, is quite health based jungler for the way you build him. Like those those higher health champions, you, you'll see it when you... Um, and Cho'Gath is great, Blade of is great into Cho'Gath. You don't necessarily have to build a first item, but it's definitely like an item you want to pick up. Now, usually my rule on Graves is you build one attack speed item fairly quickly. It's going to either be the Phantom Dancer or the Blade of the Rune King. Blade of the Rune King, again, into higher health tankier comps is really nice. In combination with like the um, Black Cleaver first item and then Blade of the Rune King right after to give you the attack speed you need still. And then also just the straight health based damage. Bl uh, the Black Cleaver will shred all the extra armor that you need because this Bladed Rune King deals physical damage and then that way you can get through it and you don't need, really need Phantom Dancer into those, into those tankier comps because really all you need is one attack speed item in Blade or the Phantom Dancer. So yeah. Um, another great first item by the way is the Maw of Mamorthius into heavy magic resist comps, as I mentioned, and then you usually want to combine the Maw with maybe Mercs, if it's really heavy. You can also still stick with Ninja Tabbies and just get Maw as like a straight magic resist item, and that will probably keep you tanky enough to survive it for the most part. And then you can always build, uh, build the Merc Sim later on as well, to um, potentially counter out some crowd control as well. Now, those are pretty much the starting items. Most of the time in these games these days, I will start with a Black Cleaver as a first item. Or maybe a Phantom Dance. So this is like a 50-50 depending on the enemy team. And then, um, again, higher tanky comps. Uh, I will pick up a Blade after the Black Cleaver because that will help me thread through the tanks easier. Um, if they're squishier and like they were stacking like Ninja Tabe earlier or anything like that, then I can go for a Phantom Dancer right after or maybe even before and then the black cleaver combination will still give me a lot of armor sweat plus cdr and usually like a fifth item in that build will be a death's dance because it will provide me with a life skill i need into a squisher comp you can also still go for the blade after this as well this will just give you a lot more attack speed into this situation and another great thing to do against uh, squishy comps for example is just picking up your infinity edge right after like a cleaver or maybe even like this you go like Phantom Nets or Infinity Edge because you're facing a bunch of squishies. So if you then get the crit, then with the Infinity Edge, you're going to crit for like 1100 or something. And it's going to be a lot of damage into the enemy's face. Now, another option is with Approach Velocity, you can go for a... Um, this usually depends on the enemy team again. So either Phantom Nets or the Blade into the, into the Mallet straight after. It's not a really good first item because it doesn't provide you with that much. But as like a second item after Phantom Nets, it could be very viable, especially with Approach Velocity. So if they have... A bunch of like squishy um 
very mobile squishy champions, then fa uh, Mallet can be a great option to just stick on them and stick with them with combination of the approach velocity. And then this could be a very good build to set up into um, like anything really, but you want, like you can get a blade. If you're fighting up against more tanky stuff, you can still get the black cleaver after this. There's a, like a lot of options here. Usually what my, in most games, my build kind of looks like this. It's like going to be a, a black cleaver rush into most of the time like a phantom dancer because there's not really that many high health champions you're facing so this will deal really well with the um, ramesses you find these days because you can then shred their armor and then also crit them in the process and then you can combine this with like a devs de devs dance all right client cool story uh devs dance and then maybe a merc sim if you're facing ramus again because then the qss effect will Help you remove the uh, Ramus taunt so you won't get locked down as efficiently. If it's not Ramus, if it's not really anything with any good CC, you can also combine it with the Bloodthirster because this will synergize really well with the extra healing you already get from your overheal. Or like the uh, extra shielding you get from overheal and all that kind of stuff. So this is a very lifesteal heavy, very like damage heavy good build that you can use. You can also, if you're like more afraid of getting one shot, you can go for like a lost item GA in combination with a Death Dance. It's going to keep you very safe. And then also the Phantom Dancer because then the Phantom Dancer will reduce the damage by 12%. This means that you can't get one shot easily. And if they do still get through all that, you also have the GA to get like to fall back on. And then eventually you can sell your jungle item for an Infinity Edge in this build to go for a straight damage. And then that way you can um, like put out insane amounts of damage whilst being very hard to kill. So that's pretty much the item options. Honestly, if I've missed anything, make sure to let me know. I went over it best I, th best I can, I think. If you have any questions on it, also make sure to let me know. And yeah, if you've enjoyed the video so far, please make sure to hit the thumbs up below. And let's get right into the gameplay now. All right, welcome to the gameplay section of this guide. As you can see, I'm playing Graves, of course, into a Warwick. Honestly, not the greatest matchup for Graves because uh, Warwick does have quite a lot of CC and he does have a lot of split damage. And since Graves doesn't have any magic resist uh, from his passive anymore, really, or like any magic resist in general, you kind of have to build the magic resist in the form of like Mercury Treads. He will actually deal a good amount of damage to me. And if he plays this well, he definitely can win this matchup fairly, fairly easily, actually. So that's really not that great for me, but... The main thing you got to do as Graves into Warwick is just make sure that you keep farming up, up and up, and then you just, I mean, you, you can win later on by just picking, buying the right items. Also, Warwick tends to go for a lot of ganks, especially lower elo Warwicks. They then tend to disregard their farm a little bit more and tend to really try to pressure out ganks with their passive. So anytime anyone gets low, they will just instantly run there and then you can potentially also counter jungle them very easily or counter jungle him very easily and then that way that's that's how you get ahead and that's how you win against warwick a great item against warwick apart from mercury threats is obviously as well the qss you gonna have to look at if you actually need it or not if the enemy team has more like cc that you have to deal with then qss can be a good item as well but yeah all right right here i'm starting blue buff uh, what i do on graves is i will always start both side so uh, ba basic, uh, basically because it gives me the best leash not really because you lose any health because on graves jungle you really don't use uh, like lose any health so yeah a full clear is most of the time the one you want to go for on graves and yeah apart from that uh, on the other side of the map by the way i will still start red buff um the only thing i do differently on the other side of the map is i go for red buff into like wolves into uh, blue and gromp and then look maybe for a top lane gank. I might skip Gromp uh, to do a top lane gank if he's pushing or anything like that. Or maybe if the top laner is already fighting, then it could go there as well. But that's usually the clear. And then after that, after you clear the Gromp or did a top gank, you can clear Scalder Crab if you want to. It's not that time efficient, but usually sometimes I'll just pick it up because I have a smite left over or anything. And then you can clear it pretty quickly and it's pretty free that way. But after that, I will go back to my Krux into Raptors. And then as soon as you get to your wolf camp again, it will respawn. And then Gromp will respawn again. And that way you hit level 5 fairly easily. And that's pretty much clear for the other side of the map. On this side, it's pretty straightforward. You just full clear. And then, like, you can, you can gank top lane. And then you can full clear again. And it's pretty... Yeah, it's just self-explanatory that way. All right, here Warks looking to gank mid lane. I'm still working on my full clear right now. I'm still on full HP. I have not used any health potions yet, which is 
really what's gonna happen with the, the build, like the way I've set it up, and if you play Graves properly, and keep your stacks up as well, like your passive stacks, as you can see, I'm r currently on 8 true grid stacks, 40 bonus armor, you won't really take any damage from your jungle camps, and that's the most important thing. The main trick from keeping your stacks up, I mean, obviously dashing a lot is what matters, but right here is where the main trick comes in from this clear. From your wolf camp, you kind of want to cut the wolf all the way down here, as you saw earlier as well, you can rewind back if you want to. But you saw earlier as well, and then you just drag it out this way, and then hit the last auto attack here or something. Then you can walk up and use your E over this slide wall, and then you'll keep your stacks up that way, and you're good. Now right here, that's exactly what I meant. I full cleared, I saw Urgot pushed in, so it's pretty free for me to just walk in. I still have red buff, fresh red buff. My W slows him for 50% now since it's a new patch, so he gets a nice quick slow, which locks him down fairly easily, and then my red buff can follow it up. Unfortunately, he didn't die because, um, I mean, Urgot's very tanky and he did have a lot of potions sticking as well, so that kind of saved him for a good amount. But I do pressure the Urgot out of lane fairly easily and uh, the Nasus can just push this in. Relieve some of the pressure on Nasus since he was all the way pushed in and this way it gives it like gives him some breathing room, really. Because right now Urgot has to play a bit scared since I could still be there. He doesn't really have the pressure on Nasus. Nasus is full HP and Nasus does still have his flash whilst he doesn't. So he needs to be careful, and then that way I've like I I uh, made some room for the Nasus to start stacking up easily, because st stacking with Nasus under turret early game is fucking annoying. I can tell you that much. So that's why, if anyone pushes in, like anyone's gonna push in a Nasus. So unless they ward really well, then you can definitely do the gank. And even if they ward, they'll most likely ward this brush. So if you then make sure you use this plant or like dash over the wall with Graves right here, and then walk in this way, then you should still be good. All right, here as I said. My Groms respawned after all that, so it's pretty much gonna respawn all my camps again, and I'm just gonna look to full clear once again, because that's what you gotta do on Graves, you gotta keep up that clear, and if you don't keep up your clear, you're gonna just fall behind, you're not gonna be ahead, and then it's just gonna be a really hard game from there, because right now Graves isn't the best champion you can play, like, sure he's pretty good if you can actually play him properly, or if you like, like to play him or anything like that, he can be very good, especially with the setup I have, but... If you don't make sure you keep your farm up, keep your level advantage going, then there's no way in hell you're ever going to be ahead and you're ever going to be able to carry games. The level advantage plays a big role, and since Graves can farm so fast, that's really where his power kicks in, so that's really something you have to make sure you do. Also, don't farm too much, you definitely still need to push up, put out like gank pressure, because if you don't put out gank pressure, like, then it's really just a dice roll if your team actually survives. Because if they die whilst like you're not ganking at all, then it's gonna be hard. Even though like you can be like three levels up on the enemy jungler, the enemy jungler could have like six assists or something, and then made like six skills happen for the laners, and then my laners will be too far behind for me to actually do anything at all. So definitely need to find a good balance between ganking and actually farming. All right, here at level six on uh, six minutes, which is a really good time. That's usually the time you should be hitting it, especially on graves with your farm, uh, with your uh, clear speed potential. So six on six minutes is really what you should realistically aim for. All right, here. By the way, the first back I went with is the Red Smite and Boots. That is usually the back I go with because it's the most versatile back. It will cost 950 gold, which is easily something you can have on your first back after a full clear. It, yeah, it's just the best one to go for after that. It just, just depends on how much gold you back with, but usually it will be like double longsword. Maybe the Clawfield's Warhammer, and maybe if I got like th two or three kills, then um, I would pick up my jungle item. But right now, the Katarina was pushing in, the Nasus was pushing in, and my bot lane was also kind of pushing in, so there's really not anything to gank. I mean, bot lane wasn't going to happen anyway because of the fact that I started clearing there. The only real ganks that were an opportunity would be Vygar, but that's a Katarina opponent and she doesn't really have any hard CC, makes that a difficult gank. And then the Urgold was pushed into his turret, so then uh, that way he just can't do anything. Now right here, he does have red buff, I have blue buff, so I have to respect that. He also has red smite, I looked at that. There's really not chance, like I can 1v1 one one him if I outplay him and if I can like maybe flash or dash his ultimate. That way I can win it, but the reason I don't want to go for it at all is because of the fact that my bot lane just recalled and that their Zaya and Nami were still in lane. So if I start fighting that Warwick, then I won't have the pressure for my bot lane to follow up or even um, pressure their bot lane in so they cannot follow the Warwick up. And then it's just going to be a 1v3, which is not a good situation to be in at all. Now right there, I kind of just... I was kind of maybe looking to see if Warwick was doing Dragon or anything. There was really nothing else for me to do since... Going top lane at that point would, would have taken too long. I kind of want to 
to wait to, for my Grom to respawn, so all my camps would respawn to uh, get the full clear in again. And going for a mid lane gank wasn't really going to happen, also because of wave positioning. So I kind of just hang, ar like hang around there, make sure that Warwick doesn't really do dragon. Because Warwick's one of those champions that definitely wants to look towards doing dragon. And if you can avoid that from happening at that point, it's pretty good. Now Warwick's looking to go bot lane here. I'm still working on my full clear, but right now, in about a second, I will. I remember that I see the Warwick going bot lane. It's nothing for me to react to at this point because I'm already topside. If he was to go mid lane or anything like that, I would run there as fast as I can to counter gank. Or maybe like go anywhere else. But right here, they dive him really far. Like the bot lane really far. Warwick X. Wait, alright, here. Warwick here slightly misses his ultimate. I'll go up a bit further. Right here, Warwick barely misses his ultimate on this guy. He exhausts him so he doesn't get the kill on Soraka. This is good. Katarina can easily respond to this. She has like a lot of kill pressure on that with her ultimate. I noticed I was never going to be there in time even though I was right there. If the Katarina responds to that then that's the way it's going to be and that's the way that play is going to happen. So that's really all I did. And right there, not only does that really go really badly for the Warg, but I knew that I didn't have to be there. I knew that Katarina would be easily be able to cover that. And at that point I can just easily go towards his top side camps because I know they're up. And then I can take that, all three camps from him, and then it puts him really far behind for what he just did. So right now he lost his entire top side, plus he lost this, um, like, like he lost the fight on bot lane, he didn't really get anything for it. Now right here, I mean, this is just straight up from going from behind. Urgot doesn't see me coming because he only has this warded right here, and I just cleared his top side, I took the plant over. You can even dash over on Graves. You can come in from behind. Now you want to lead with a smoke screen like in front of them so they have to walk through it or like around it which is kind of taking more time. But right now Urgot, I mean his flash just barely came back up right there so that's kind of unfortunate. But So I missed my ultimate because he flashed it but then Nasus flashes after the Urgot and we still pick up the kill. Now right here we are, I, I just wanted to quickly push this in and then I will go towards my camps again. Warwick's looking to go gank mid lane. I mean... I figured he'd probably do that, but at that point, I just use everything top lane, really. And I kind of wanted to make sure I get my red buff and my Krugs as well, so I just went for the, uh, for the jungle clear instead. As you can see, this is what happens when you just, like, keep farming and out-rotate and maybe even invade when you see the Warwick go for too much pressure ganks as he's doing the entire time. He's way too, like, trying way too hard to get those ganks off. So right now, I'm two levels up on him, plus I have double his CS pretty much. It's, uh, it's rough, like, not exactly, but it's... It's nearly double. Now Kogma dies to a Warwick gank. He gets the ult. Uh, Warwick ult ganks. It's pretty much guaranteed to kill if they do it correctly. So yeah. Alright here. Warwick warded that. I was like alright. Um, kind of what I was thinking right here is this. Let's go back a bit. Now they just killed it. I saw Soraka was here very low. So she's never going to help me in time. I saw Katarina moving down a little bit, so all I wanted to do here was like kind of stall. I saw the Warwick right there, but I was just standing right here as if I didn't see him. So they would go for this play. If the Katarina could come in from behind, that could be a play. Vygar does wall really poorly, and then Warwick does go on me for some reason. I do have red buff, and I'm two levels up on him. Plus, I have my jungle item and Merc Threats. So he's really never going to see me down that effectively. Then right there, I just red smite him. I auto attack him with red buff. He dies to the burn damage from both of those, and it's just over for him. So... Just from being that far ahead, I could kind of bait them in. And then that way, um, it just made the play really easy for me. Alright, here, 1-0-1. I'm, like, doing fairly well for myself. 30 farm, 35 CS. Way more than the um, Warwick. And I'm still looking to pressure out his camps. His red buff just respawned. Warwick just respawned as well, so he's never going to be there in time. So I can easily pick up the red buff as well and put him out of more jungle camps. Denying him his red buff is a big deal as well. And then, yeah. After that, I just follow up towards the dragon. Because my bot lane has a lot of pressure. The Kogma and the Soraka had the wave pushed in. If the bot lane is positioned this way, it would be really bad for them to react to this. Because they would lose too many minions. So I knew that. And I could just ask for my bot lane to come. And then we just pick up the dragon that way. Now here, my entire jungle is back up. So all I'm looking to do right now is just clear my entire camps again. To make sure I keep my CS going. I'm 105 CS right now. And I haven't really taxed any lanes, maybe like one wave or maybe one, one and a half, two waves in total. But mainly just the fact, just keeping your farm going and then also invading once, once like the warrior ganks something. And then counter jungling him. That's the way I'm going to keep my lead and that's the way it works. Also a small trick to remember in this Kruk camp, um, the small golems die to your W. 
even though it doesn't do enough damage initially, it's you hit this, uh, the monsters with a spell, and then your jungle item pretty much kills the small ones. So that's the way that works. Now right here, I saw Warwick's W press, uh, uh, saw, saw him press W, so I knew that he was around, so I was kind of looking towards it. Maybe he was like trying to go top lane with it. Yeah. Now all I have to do right here is just, I want to pressure this turret down, because we just poked Urgot out of lane. And then, by just going for the first turret here, that will give me a, give you a massive lane advantage. This is kind of the stage in the game where you really want to look towards pressing turrets down. Right here, I just throw a quick Q to get the push going for the Nasus. So you can just push that in real quick, and then back as well. Now, Warwick does go for my red buff here, but, I mean, I didn't know that. I thought I'd still have it, but at this point, uh, the Katarina just killed Vigar. I was walking right past it. I was thinking of going towards my red buff. But because she killed the Vigar, I know we could get the mid turret as well. And then getting that objective is a really big deal. Now right here, I'm just walking back to my red buff, looking to actually get it, but not knowing that Warks did it yet. So I just walked past it, he, Warwick did it. I checked the brush to make sure he wasn't recalling it or in it or anything. Now my Raptor camp just respawned. And then I just clear down towards my wolf camp and then my uh, croc camp as well to keep my farm going. That's really the important key of this. And yeah. All right, here I'm sitting on a lot of gold. I have 2,800 gold, which is pretty much straight up a black cleaver back. So I definitely do look towards backing quite soon. Mark just killed someone bot lane. I saw him quite low, and really, realistically, he's never going to be able to beat me. I do get my red buff back, which is really nice. And yeah, I'm level 12, which is insane. Like I'm the same level as my mid laner right now, and that's really what you want to be on Graves. M maybe even higher level than your mid laner in certain situations. Now we know that his red just respawned again, so I'm looking to pressure that down again. There's not much we can do. I ask Soraka to come and follow me. In those situations where your AD carry isn't bot lane, you might as well ask your support to follow your invade because there's really not anything that's gonna happen otherwise. And yeah. Now right there, I am sitting on 4,000 gold, which is insane. And really, the item I'm looking for right here is the Black Cleaver first. Black Cleaver gives me a really good damage spike against their team because the, um, like, they pretty much... The two main ones that I buy it for are the Urgot and the Warwick, of course. The other ones are squishy enough that it really doesn't really matter if I were to go like anything else. I still got 24 armor pen, but mainly the CDR and the health to be a bit, little bit more tanky. The key here is also the health, because Vigor ultimate can fuck me up if I don't have like enough, um, like a, a high enough health pool to be able to sustain his burst damage. Sure, his ult skills of missing health, but having more health straight up helps you a lot, especially with this build. Because you do have the overheal and a lot of sustain from your runes already. That you can just easily go for the health build and just sustain it out that way. Go for like a sustaining type uh, fight build. And then after this, um, considering they don't really have any real tanks. I'll go back here actually. They don't have any real tanks, like high health tanks. I'm just gonna go for a uh, Phantom Dancer instead of the Blade of the Rune King as I explained earlier as well. Oops, I didn't want to press that back to face another time. Right here, we're looking for the pressure. I'm level 13, I'm way stronger than them right now, so I'm not too afraid. I have a Soraka by me as well to heal me up. Right here, I see the pink ward right there, as you can see, right here. So I knew that they were, might be wanting to loot this way. I saw the Jenna here. Or not the Jenna, the Nami, sorry. I just go over the wall, E auto attack, Q ult him, and then he's dead. Like, he is a really squishy support, I have a lot of damage. I wanted to make sure that before I shoot my ultimate, you have to make sure that you do as much, like, physical damage to him as possible. So you want to get that auto attack in, that Q for both the hits and then ult, so your cleaver gets more procs on it. And then your ult will deal a lot more execute damage to the target, or just a lot more damage in general. Now right here, I can easily just keep chasing because I'm really far ahead, and I'm really just, like, fat. And plus, the movement speed, like, rune... Gives me a really easy chase potential combined with my black cleaver. So yeah. Oh, wrong one run. And right here I just keep going because I mean I'm so tanky, I have so much movement speed, so much sustain. I have a Soraka behind me, there's really no way of me actually dying. I can tank a lot of turret shots and be fine with it. And pressure the turret down here as well, but in this time they surrender. Now this is pretty much the way you want to play Graves. You want to keep that farm going, maybe gank like gank when it fits you the best. So after like a full clear, you can gank top lane, maybe counter gank like mid lane, or like if you full clear and then recall, you can first walk bot lane and then gank that, and then that way you can then go back into full clearing your camps quite efficiently. Same thing kind of goes for the other side of the map. If you start red buff and then clear red wolves gr uh, blue, maybe gromp and then gank top lane, and then you can go back bot lane, and then you can full clear, maybe gank mid lane after like raptors, and then go back to your top side. That's a lot of efficient... Ganking is very important on Graves, and that's something you gotta remember the best way you can. This is the way 
I get the most farm in the game. I have 182 farm. This happens to me quite a lot that I actually just have like near perfect CS on like Graves Jungle because you just have that much like clear speed, clear potential. And if you invade properly, you can get really far ahead. Anyway, if you guys have any questions, make sure to ask them in the comments below. I will do my best to answer those for you. And if you've enjoyed the video, please make sure to hit the thumbs up. It means quite a lot to me. You don't even know. It really just helps the video get out there and all that. And yeah, if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe as well. And see you guys in the next video. Bye!